everybody and welcome back to another video with me, Miss Martins. Today we're going to carry on with the kinetic molecular theory and in particular we're going to look at the kinetic molecular theory and how it relates to the heating curve. Now if you haven't watched part one of the series, I suggest you do that now. Now as you can see, a heating curve is basically described as a curve that shows the change in temperature of a substance during a time period when heating occurs. Now the first thing that I want you to guys to understand is that when we heat a substance, we are adding energy to the substance. We are adding heat energy to the substance. And the first thing that I want you to get familiar with right off the bat is the fact that if I add heat, okay, I'm adding heat to the substance, that does not necessarily mean the temperature of the substance increases. So I want you to understand that there is a difference between heat um, basically, another word for heat in this context will be energy, heat energy, and temperature. So if you can see the curve over here, we'll discuss the axes, the heading, and everything um, in a second. But you can basically see that this is a measure of temperature as time goes on. And what's important to understand is that sometimes the temperature isn't increasing. You can see the flat parts of the graph, like over here, this part over here, temperature is not increasing. And this part over here, temperature is not increasing. So, but... As time is going on, I'm adding heat to the substance. So another measure, another thing that can be measured on this axis is actually time. And we are most commonly going to see time in seconds or time in minutes being measured on the x-axis and on the y-axis temperature. So let's look more closely at the heating curve and how it works. As you can see here, my heading is heating curve of water. This is showing water in particular, the substance water. Another heading for this curve could be temperature of water versus time in minutes. As you can see on the y-axis, which is this one, we've got temperature measured in degrees Celsius. It's very important when drawing a graph to look and label your axes correctly with unit. So temperature, degrees Celsius, time in minutes. And we've got the curve over here. Now I've labeled this curve, I've shown in yellow the, the phases present. So here you can see solid, then we've got solid and liquid, then we've got liquid, then we've got liquid and gas, and then we've got gas. See, my key over here says phases in yellow and phase change in green. So you can see the first horizontal of the graph represents melting, the second represents boiling or evaporation. Remember, both terms are applicable. And then I've also indicated the boiling point over here, which we know for water is 100 degrees Celsius. We read it off over here. The boiling point is the, where the graph reaches its second flat, its second horizontal, and this over here will be the melting point. Right, now what I want to point out with this graph is that we've got our y-axis and our x-axis over here, and generally where our y-axis and our x-axis meet, if you think of a Cartesian plane, that is the origin, which is the zero, zero position. Over here, they've kind of drawn it very strangely, and they started with negative 40. That's not really how we like to do it. So we like to draw our graphs looking more like this. As you can see, this is the y-axis. This is the x-axis. Temperature versus time. And we can see here where those two axes cross. That is the origin. It's the zero position. If my temperature is below zero, we generally draw it below the x-axis like this. So for example, this would be negative 100 or negative 10 or negative 50 or whatever. This would be a better representation of a heating curve. So let's take a look at this one and discuss it in more detail. So it says the heating curve of, now in this case I said water, this will not be the heating curve of water. And I wonder if you guys can tell me why. Think about it for a second. So this I'm going to change here to substance X. This would not represent the heating curve of water. Let's say heating curve of substance X. Or remember another way that I can label this graph another heading that I could use, is temperature versus time for heating of substance X. So the reason why this graph would not represent water or the heating curve of water is because look at the melting point. So the first horizontal of the graph is the melting point. And look at the boiling point, the second horizontal of the graph. The melting point's at negative 20. The boiling point is at 80. Here we can read it off there. We know that the melting point of water is around 0 degrees Celsius, not negative 20. And the boiling point is around 100 degrees Celsius, not 80. So that's why I changed it to substance X. But the most important thing that I want you to notice is my axis, so temperature versus time. As time
time goes on, we are adding heat energy. But let's discuss what happens in this graph. So we start off with solid phase. So I'm going to use my yellow again, like I did in the previous example to indicate my phases. So that is solid. This over here, so I'm going to use this. This is solid phase. Okay, this over here is when my object or when my substance is in its liquid phase. And this over here is when my substance is in its gas phase. We know that as I add heat to a substance, it goes from solid to liquid and liquid to gas. Okay, so the inclined paths represent when my substance is in one phase. Then we've got the horizontal parts of the graph. Now, I need you to understand what is actually happening in the horizontal parts. Now, in the horizontal part, so when I mean horizontal, I mean this part over here and this part over here. In the horizontal part of the graph, a phase change is happening. This is a phase change. And what I mean by phase change is, for example, we are going from a solid to a liquid. And that phase change, that process is called melting. So the phase change that is happening is solid to liquid. The process is called melting. And over here, we're going from a liquid to a gas. So this is another phase change called boiling or evaporation. Now, why is the graph horizontal here? Well, what you need to notice is that during phase changes, so when a substance is going from one phase to another, solid to liquid, liquid to gas, during a phase change, there is no increase in temperature. And you might be thinking, but ma'am, how is there no increase in temperature? We are adding heat. We are adding heat. So what's happening? Why is there no increase in temperature? Well, basically what happens is as I add heat to the substance, that heat energy is not causing the temperature to increase. We can see the temperature is constant here at negative 20. So it's not causing the temperature to increase, but what it is doing is it is causing the forces between the particles. They are called intermolecular forces. It is causing the intermolecular forces to weaken. Okay, it, We are overcoming those intermolecular forces. Basically, breaking those forces up. Breaking is not a great word to use because we don't really break a force. We, we weaken the force. Uh, we weaken the forces and that is causing a phase change. So think about it. In order to weaken the forces, in order to cause those particles to move further and further apart, we need energy. So all that energy that we're adding is going into the phase change process. It's going into weakening those intermolecular forces. And that's why there's not enough energy to increase the temperature. I hope that makes sense. So I've summarized it in the following way for you. When we heat a substance, according to the kinetic molecular theory, the kinetic molecular theory, one of two things can happen. Now, the first thing that can happen is when we heat a substance. So basically we're adding heat, we're adding energy. The first thing that can happen is the temperature of the substance can increase because of the heat absorbed. The phase doesn't change in these instances. So I said you're the average kinetic energy of the particles and therefore the temperature of the substance increases. Remember, average kinetic energy is a measure of temperature. I'm going to say that again. Average kinetic energy is a measure of temperature. So if the average kinetic energy increases, the temperature increases. But the substance is still in the same phase. So let us use a color to illustrate that. Let's choose yellow. So the first thing that can happen is the temperature of the substance can increase. And I said, yeah, the inclined parts of the graph. So if we look at another graph over here, we can see that that is this part. So see, the temperature is increasing, but the substance is still in one phase. So it's still a solid, still a liquid. Yeah, it's still a gas. There's no phase change, but the temperature is increasing. The kinetic energy is increasing. Then the second thing that can happen is I can add heat energy, but the temperature does not increase. And then you might think, what happens to the heat energy? Remember, that heat energy is being used to overcome the intermolecular forces. It causes the particles to move further and further apart. That increases the potential energy, not kinetic energy. So you see, I said temperature and kinetic energy stays the same. So it's the flat parts of the graph. 
and during these stages to the flat parts of the graph, the temperature is not increasing, the kinetic energy is not increasing, all that energy is being used to change phase. So it's a phase change happening. So another summary on the inclined parts of the graph, that's what happens, versus on the flat parts of the graph, that is what happens. And just take note that on the flat parts of the graph, when a phase change is occurring, we actually have two phases present. So this is melting. This is the, the process. Melting is happening over here. A solid is being changed into a liquid. That's the phase change. Both solid and liquid are present. Over here, the flat part, we've got a phase change. So we're going from liquid to gas. It's called boiling or evaporation. Boiling. And both liquid and gas are present over there. So you need to be able to answer questions like this, identify the phase or phases present. So AB will be a solid, BC will be a solid and a liquid, CD, remember it's the next inclined part, will be a liquid, DE will be a liquid and a gas, that's where the phase change is happening, remember both phases are present, and EF will be a gas. And if they ask you for phase changes, just remember that BC will be melting, so that's solid to liquid. DE will be boiling or evaporation, so that's liquid to gas. If you want to see past paper questions like this one, please let me know in the comments below. Let me know what else you need help with. And I wish you the very best for all your preparations and all your studies. Please subscribe, share this video, give it a thumbs up if you haven't yet. Um, and I hope to see you guys soon.